Hi, I'm Angela with The Grocery Shrink, and I am here to show you how to make an IQ lamp. And there are kits that you can buy to make one, but I made mine out of a template I found online, and I'll give you the link to that. And then I got some vellum from Hobby Lobby that's in a very large sheet that's usually used for architecture drawings. And it took two sheets, and you're going to eventually need 30 pieces that look like this. And you'll notice um, that there is a notch on one corner and a straight edge on the other, and then the opposite is true. And so you do not want to flip them the other way. So I want you to stack all of your pieces up so that they're all exactly the same direction. And you're going to start with five pieces. You can set the rest of them aside for now. And you're, we're going to try to start with a piece like this. And I've found that since I'm using vellum and it's not the commercially produced plastics, I have problem with slippage a little bit. So if it starts to frustrate me, I'm using these glue dots to um, hold it all together. And you'll notice that on this finished lamp, um, here's a section where there was a glue dot. You can see it a little bit, but it's clear and it really doesn't detract from the lamp. Okay, so you're going to take two of the pattern pieces. You're going to turn, take the one in your right hand and turn it 90 degrees and then slip it in. And also um, notice that all angle corners go together and all straight edges go together. So that's, as, we, as it gets more difficult as we go on, that's one way for you to keep your place. Okay, this is my final one, and I'm going to slip this one here, and I'm also going to bring that back around. And now I have my five piece, it looks like a star, and you're going to need to make two of those. So go ahead and do that, and I will catch you for the next step. Here. The next step, you're going to need five pieces, and it's going to take this and turn it into this. So we're always keeping the same orientation with the angled edge on top and the straight edge on the bottom and we're still going to be doing angled edge to angled edge and straight edge to straight edge on the piece. Each one of these is going to be attached in three places. This is the section where I ended up using quite a few glue dots and we're going to do a, a link up there and here and then one right here. And if um, when I put a glue dot in, I want to think about where another piece is going to go. So I would not want to put a glue dot here because another piece will run around um, and I wouldn't be able to slip it in. But I can attach one right there. The nice thing about it is they peel off pretty easily if you end up putting one in a place you wish you hadn't. So there's the first one and there's five sections. One. Here's the first one. One, two, three, four, five is where we're going to put these. Here's number four. And they all go on exactly the same way as the one before it. So that, is, that one's not wanting to stay. So instead of gluing under here, I'm going to, to put a dot where I won't have to slip another piece again. i stay. And the last piece here. And then you'll repeat that for the other side. So you're going to want two sections just like this. You should have ten pieces left. And we're going to make um, five groups of two. And you're going to take your two pieces and attach them just like this. And hopefully they'll stay. And go ahead and do that until you have five sets. On this step, it's really important to remember that angled pieces go together and straight pieces go together. I've already got a glue dot ready to go because this is the row where everything starts slipping on me. So this is an angled section you can see right there. So I'm going to insert this one here. 
And then the other side, right here. And then the third spot we're attaching it is right there. And I'm going to take the time right now to secure that. This is the piece I just put on. The next section is going to attach to it. Like this. And like this. You see how it's slipping? I'm going to grab me a glue dot. Right in place, and then right here. I'm going to keep track of this piece because the next section is going to attach to it. Right here, and right here, and then right here. And before I lose it, I'm going to stick it down. Here. I'm going to keep track of this piece because piece number four is going to attach right there. And right here, and this is the one that likes to slip on me, so before it does, I'm going to grab it. Right there, and right there, and then the very last one. Same thing as all the others. Attach to the last piece you just put in. And right here. step we're going to take um, the, the piece that we didn't attach the third row to and we're going to put them together and this is where I'm going to be looking for straight edge and angled edge. Here's my straight edge and my angled edge and I'm going to slip them together and I'm just going to look for that all the way around the piece. This is the hardest step but if you can remember those two things you will be fine. And also remember your glue dots because as things start slipping at this point, it's a real challenge. Again, if you're using a commercial kit, I've never seen them have to use glue or anything like that. Doing it this way and without finding a sale, it cost me about $7 to make a lamp. Um, but on sale, I can do it for $4.20. So I think it's worth the hassle of messing with the glue dots here. So there and there. And also remembering that there is no place that's not attached. Okay, we've got our thing together. And I have a Hema lamp cord from Ikea and a compact fluorescent bulb. I recommend these bulbs because they're very low wattage. This one's 15 watt, but it's the equivalent of a 60 watt bulb and they don't get hot. So it re reduces the fire hazard risk. And then you're just going to find one of these little curly places and gently slip it in. 